Hello, everybody. We're glad you're here. We got a little different format today. Uh, uh, it just worked out perfectly. In in God good, and uh, we are going to. Uh, I'm not going to be preaching the next hour because we're going to have the Schaefers. They're going to sing and worship and lead us in worship, and just a uh, kind of a, a day of worship. It's going to be good. And and uh, 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 Doctor C. T. Lee, you know, Pastor Craig, he's preaching at New Hope Worship Center in Harrisonburg. This is his second time there. I'm thinking they're wanting him pretty bad to come and be their pastor. So we'll see how that pans out. And so I, since I'm not preaching at 1030, I want to continue our series on hope. Hope's a good thing, amen? amen. And uh, uh, there's hope that works mysteriously, you know? Hope in God works mysteriously. And I, I want us to uh, open our Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. And... Uh, uh, it's all good. Colossians, you know, Gentiles eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Gentiles eat popcorn. That's how I remember how they go in order. In an acronym, you know, it's all, it's a long story and I don't have time to tell it. Um, I had a seminary professor one day say that uh, to me, or to the class, you know, up, up and coming and budding preachers, preacher boys. And uh, we, uh, it just kind of stuck. Hope's a wonderful thing, amen? Don't believe me, ask Pastor Jeff. Hope is a wonderful thing. And, uh, and we're happy, uh, uh, you know, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Hope, hope, hope. Hope is never in question. Hope is a certainty. Because God has promised. He's promised in His Word. He's promised, and I'm standing on the word. Feelings are fickle and fleeting. You, you have, most of the time, you can hardly trust them, you know, because circumstances try to pour in upon us and, 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 and what people do or don't do and how they do or and how they didn't do and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's just how the devil works to try to diminish our hope and to steal our hope, uh, to steal our joy, to steal our peace. And so uh, I, I want you to know something about hope today. It is a mysterious, uh, it's a mysterious work of God. It's just, it's, there's mysteries in God. You know, the, do you realize you don't know all there is to know about God? I'm telling you. I mean, our God is so magnificent and so wonderful beyond explanation. You know, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul said, you know, I went up to the third heaven and I saw things that weren't lawful for me to share. Uh, uh, I mean, they were just so good and so grand and so glorious. The Apostle John was carried in vision uh, on the Isle of Patmos, and he saw things that uh, the Lord told him to write some things, but all he could do was use first century terminology for things that he was seeing that might be 21st century, you know? I mean, how in the world? Come on in, come on in, have a seat. We're glad you all made it. And... Uh, uh, and so uh, it's, it's, it's just, God is so grand and so glorious. In Colossians chapter 1, in verse 27, we find this verse. It says, To them God willed to make known what are the riches, the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. God's great glorious plan is so good that it is not contained just for his special chosen people, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob's 12 sons, and that today we call them Jews uh, uh, today. You know, the, they speak Hebrews, their mother tongue. Uh, they were called Hebrews for a long time until the, the vision of the, the, the northern and the southern kingdom. And the southern kingdom was dominated by the tribe Judah, and that's where the name Jew comes from, okay? And so, uh, uh, and that's how we know them today because in 70 AD, Titus, General Titus, who became Emperor Titus of the Roman Empire, uh, came in and destroyed, uh, conquered and destroyed Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. And do you know what 
facilitated the, the, the rebellion. This, the, the Jews would rebel oftentimes against Rome. It was a powder keg. But the thing that overwhelmed them and really got them bent out of shape is they found the temple treasury and they started taking uh, of the temple treasury. I mean, you've got to understand uh, that uh, in order to worship, you know, your offering, um, uh, if, it, if you brought a monetary offering, and everyone was expected to bring something, you know, something. It was silver. And, of course, people with means, they, they'd bring gold. I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, and, and so here is a, I don't even know what silver's worth an ounce today. Has it reached $100 an ounce yet? I don't think so. It's like $40 or $16 an ounce. And it, there for a while, gold was worth $1,400 an ounce or something like that. I mean, you see? So silver, you know, even if it's a little teeny piece, you know, a widow's mite, you know, uh, itty bitty. Everyone gave. And that's why King Solomon was the richest man on earth that has ever been. Do you, do you understand? King Solomon? Because they understood the importance of sowing into the kingdom. The problem is that the, uh, the old covenant followers of Yahweh weren't real good about evangelization. But now we are. Now we are. As new covenant followers of Yahweh, we are. So, to them, that, that's us, you know, us, born-again people, not necessarily of Jewish descent, all of us. To them, God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. A mystery is something that was previously hidden, and now God says, peekaboo. I'm going to show you. You see, that's why there's such an, a ferocious appetite for eschatology today, the doctrine of end things, end time things, the coming, the second coming of Christ, the rapture of the church, the, the antichrist, the mark of the beast, the, the, this one world uh, monetary system, you know, and, and all these things that, are, that the stage is set. It's not really implemented yet because there's a restraining power upon the earth called the church and 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 the the he who hinders it is the holy spirit that lives in us and when we go in the rapture the restraining power of the holy spirit will be removed and all hell will break loose upon the earth crazy things crazy things we're seeing glimpses now you know i mean i never i never dreamed in my lifetime i would hear people say we want socialism. In America, we want socialism. Well, i got a problem with that. It's never worked one time anywhere. All it does is bankrupt countries. Margaret Thatcher had a wonderful saying, socialism works wonderful until you run out of everybody else's money. You know? Uh, uh, the only thing that will lift everybody up is, is, is what our God gave our founding fathers insight. And that is to operate in a way that if you don't work, you'll not eat. If you're able to work and you won't work, sorry, Charlie, I'm not going to give you a bologna sandwich. Get out there and work, you see. Get out there and work. Now, we're obligated to help people who can't, you know, who are, have disabilities and things like that, uh, can't work. I remember years ago, I was pastoring in the mountains of uh, southern West Virginia, and uh, a, a guy named Ralph Poland. He worked for the gas company, and he's retired, and he was in my church, and uh, he worked at the golf course. He made golf clubs and, and re, you know, re you know what I mean? He said, he says, Pastor, come on down and play some golf with me. I knew what that meant. Cha-ching, I ain't paying a dollar. Because <laughs> he could play all, and he could always have a guest. 
And so we went down, and he says, now let's get down there at such and such time before it gets real busy. I said, okay. And we got down there, you know, and there was always these two guys in front of us. I mean, and they always played 36 holes every day. Sometimes they'd play more than that. But 36 holes, they would play, they would, they would play two full rounds every day, you know. And I said, who are these guys? And he told me who they were. And I said, wow, man, they must really, they must work the afternoon shift. Oh, no, they're disabled. I said, what, what's their problem? Oh, they got back problems. I said, they got back problems? Listen, I'm not disabled, but my back says, ouch, 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 ouch. And they're disabled? And, and yeah, they're disabled coal miners is what they were. So I knew they were making more money on disability than I made working. Because, you know, it's based on your income. You, you understand? And I thought, Wow. Why wasn't I a coal miner and got hurt? I mean, no, no. I didn't, I didn't think that at all. The riches of the glory of the mystery among Gentiles. That's you and me. Among the Gentiles, which is... Now, what's the mystery? Now, this is something brand new. Christ in you. You see, under the Old Covenant, Christ, would, the, the Spirit of God, God would rest upon people. You see, He would rest upon them, but not indwell them and live inside. But we as a new covenant people, the Spirit of God lives in us. I mean, God lives in I am the temple of God. I mean, isn't that wonderful to think? That God Himself lives in me? He lives in me. The Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity, He lives in me. I am the temple of God. And it's, it's, it's just so wonderful to, to think that the Creator God of everything that I could see, understand, or even imagine, or I just, I mean, you know, and beyond me, and things I don't know about. He created these things, and He has chosen to live in me. The repentant, believing sinner, now I become a saint of God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? So to them, God willed to be made known. What are the riches of the glory, the mystery this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. And now, what is Christ in me? The hope of glory. Now, there's not one... I'm going to pronounce a Greek letter in an Appalachian way, okay? There's not one iota, okay? It's iota in, in Greek, you know. But, you know, I is... A, well, never mind. Not one iota of question mark or uncertainty about that statement. The hope. It's steadfast. It's sure. It's guaranteed. It's absolutely positive because He is in me. Someone asked me, we were talking out in the foyer before service and and uh, uh, about some things, and, and Dave Schaefer, he's the, he's the papa of the group, you know. He's the, the daddy and, and the mama and his daughter and her husband, and they got grandkids and, and all that other stuff. You know how it works. You know how that kind of breaks out, you know. Just keeps going, going, down there. And so he, he was talking, to, he says, you know, he's, and of course they sing all over. I mean, all over Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania. You know, they, they, they sing in a lot of places. And he says, it's amazing how many people come to church and you ask them if they're Christians and they say yes and say, oh, wow, isn't it wonderful to know you're going to heaven? And they say, oh, I, I don't know that. And I'm thinking, how can you be a Christian and not know you're going to heaven? I mean, that, 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 you're talking about 
does not compute. You're talking about something that is absolutely, I mean, you're talking about an oxymoron. You're a Christian, and you don't know you're going to heaven? Now, either, either you're a Christian, or if you don't know you're going to heaven, you're not a Christian. Do you understand? And so, the hope of glory, and I told and I said, he says, how do you deal with people like that? I said, well, I just asked him, have you been saved? Have you been born again? Have you passed from death and life? You got that settled? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, what kind of life do you have? Well, I got the life of Christ. I said, amen. Now, who's, who is Christ? Well, he's Jesus. I said, who's Jesus? Oh, he's the son of God. Yeah, who else is he? Well, he's God the Son. Yeah? Okay, let me ask you another question. How long does God live? Forever. I said, that's the kind of life you have. I, as long as Jesus lives, that's how long, that's how long I'm going to live. You see? That's my hope of glory. My Jesus was crucified and he was buried, but it didn't stop there. He rose from the dead. Hallelujah. And because he lives, I can live. I can face tomorrow, I think that song says. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You see? That's the wonderful mystery that we need to proclaim. That, that he lives because he, he's my hope of glory. And it, and, and, and it works mysteriously. I'm telling you, the presence of God is all... He, he's not just in the church house on Sunday morning. He's there every day. He's there all the time as you go. I mean, whether you, you know, as you go through the house, as you go to the, to the grocery store or to the wherever, the mall or wherever you go, as you go to school or work or wherever you go, he is there because he's in me. And he'll open doors. You know, there's been a, 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 a husband and wife that's been attending now for some months now. I forget how many months. Uh, you, might, you might know them. Patrick and Janet O'Hara. Lori Mar Marple's parents. Okay? Been coming, been coming, sitting right there. And boy, and I could tell. Uh, now, Janet's from a Grace Brethren background. She was, she's been born again for years. I mean, you know, she trusted Christ. But she married a good Irish Roman Catholic. You know what that means? You know what that means, don't you? If we're getting married, you're becoming Roman Catholic, and all the kids are going to be Roman Catholic. Period. And so, uh, and, and that's what happened. Well, their daughter Lori got saved a few years ago. And her husband. And they've been faithfully coming. Glory uh, works in the preschool ministry. She's one of the teachers. And she said, please pray for my, my, my dad, mom, you know, and I knew a little bit about it. And finally, they started coming. You know, listen, there's a new spirit here. There's a freedom and a love and a tranquility that's just, I've never experienced ever since I've been here and what's here now. And all of a sudden, these people are coming from different places. And they come at, at, at 10.30. Uh, they, they're here, buddy. I mean, actually, they're out there at, at 10, about 10.17 every Sunday. And, and so uh, there they are, or not 10.17, about 10.05. And so, and they sit right there, and I could tell he's just looking and watching and looking and drinking in. And I could tell that some things are starting to make sense for him. Because he told me, he says, oh, he says, I've been Roman Catholic all my life. I was sprinkled when I was baptized when I was a baby. And I, it's all I know. He says, but none of it makes sense. <laughs> oh, I can understand that. Don't make sense to me. And I understand it. You know? I mean, I understand their thought processes, how they got to what they're doing. And so finally, and I just, you know, I, I just, I was never, never led to, uh, <clears throat> crowding you know oh I can crowd you <laughs> but, I, but I was led not I just the Lord never gave me a, you know let, it's like the Lord said he's coming be patient he's coming so this uh, 
Friday. Uh, last week they said, you know, we're going out of town Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're coming back. Could you drop by the house on Friday? And I said, oh, no, I can't do that. That's my off day. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> it is my off day. But you know what? I'm never off serving Jesus. You hear me? And so uh, call them up and said, hey, hi. Yeah, mm -hmm, come. And uh, oh, they just live right over here on Bell Circle, Bell Haven Circle, just not far from here in Lakeside. And so I, uh, two houses from Kathleen Gennaro, I think. And, and so uh, um, I go over, and there he's at the door waiting on me. You know, and they got one of them little, yep, 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 you know, like, like we do. You know, her name's Bonnie, right, Luke? Uh-huh. Just making sure he's paying attention. And so uh, we go in, and he says, no, no, he says, no, nah, you know, Pat, Pat, they call him Patrick, you know, Patrick O'Hara. Pat, he says, you know, I, I, he says, Pastor, he says, I, I've just, the uh, Lord's, he says, I've already blocked the priest's number. He can't call me anymore. I thought, well, that's a good sign. Something's happening. And, and so uh, he says, you know, I, I, I really love coming to Spirit and Word Fellowship. It is so, it's just, it, it's unlike any, thing I've ever experienced you know and I mean he's retired you know he's white-haired and <laughs> handsome fella and so uh, I said well uh, I looked at uh, I looked at Janet and I said Janet have you been saved oh yes I was raised Grace Brethren that's a denomination you know there's many different brethren groups Grace Brethren Brethren Church Church of the Brethren I, I digress and so and I know Grace Brethren very well I know that group and so um I said, oh, so you, yeah, and she explained to me, yes, she'd been saved and all that other stuff. And I looked at Pat, and he says, well, you know, I've been baptized. I said, well, that's great. I said, and I just, I, I never asked him a question. I said, here, let's, I'm going to read some scripture to you, and let's look at it, and let's just, and I read him, I took him through the Romans road, you know, Romans 3.10. There's none righteous, no, not one, you know, and in the sight of, and he, and of course, for a Catholic, that's a stumbling block right there. You see? When I was, you know. And I said, that means, that means that in the sight of God, using God as a measuring stick, none of us measure up. None of us do. I don't. You don't, Pastor? Nope. I don't measure up. Uh, and, and you don't measure up. And Janet doesn't measure up. And nobody you know measures up. Because, and I, I took him to Romans 3, 23, for all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Have you ever seen Patrick? Oh, let me tell you about it. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure you have. You're just like me, you know, just like everybody else. And I said, because, because you know, in Romans 5, 12, wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin came in the world, sin passed upon all men for all sin, and all die. You understand? That's, that's Bob translation, but that's what it says. And, and so I said, so you know anybody that doesn't age and eventually pass away? No, they all do. I said, that's because of sin. That's because of sin. But God proved his love toward us. He demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, we weren't searching for him. We didn't care for him. He loved us. He came looking for us. He allowed his son to die for us. All of a sudden, I could tell, Lord, something's starting to happen. And then I took him to Romans 10, 9 and 10. I said, Patrick, here's how you become a Christian. It's not a Baptist way, a Catholic way, a Pentecostal way, a charismatic way, a brethren way. It's just a Bible way. That if you will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. He said, Oh, I believe that. He said, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, Pastor, you know, I could tell. I said, Let's pray right now. And I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. But I'm, I want you to repeat after me, but I want you to make these words your words. And we, we went to the Lord and, and, and confessed that we, they were, that we were sinners and we're sorry for our sin. We asked the Lord to come into our heart and forgive us and save us. And then we thanked him for saving us. And we asked him to fill us with the Holy Spirit. And then, and then and then got done, you know, and he prayed out loud. Probably the first time his wife ever heard him pray out loud. I'm, I can't 
be dogmatic about that, but I, I can pretty well read some things. And so uh, I took him to Romans 10, 13. I said, now, Pat, look here. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said, did you call on the Lord? Oh, yes, sir, Pastor, I did. He wanted to call me Father. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, and, uh, and I said, yes, yes, yes. He said, yes. I said, oh, well, according to the Bible then, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. I said, did you call on the Lord? I did. Then what happened? And then all of a sudden, I'm saved. I'm saved. Now, you see how God works mysteriously? He just opens doors. You think it's random. Oh, no, he's got a plan. It's more, it's more complicated than our little pea brain can wrap our minds around. But he's got something going on, and he's my hope of glory. And see, sometimes he just lets the glory roll and come down, and we just kind of get beside ourselves. Now, let's look, at, let's look at a water break in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, the water break. Jesus said, but I need... But he needed to go through Samaria, and I told you a while back, you know, Samaria was a place where the, the people who lived there were mixed-race people. They were part Jew and part Assyrian. The Assyrians were mean and ruthless people. They destroyed the northern kingdom. And so they uh, took some people away and sent some people in, and they cross-pollinated, and the Jews hated them. The Jews despised them. And so... Uh, but Jesus says, you know what, I'm going to go where people are despised. Listen, everyone has worth to Jesus. I don't care what their background is, what their genealogy is, what they've experienced, what, what they've done or not done. Everyone's important to Jesus. Everyone. And he said, and he came to the city of Samaria called Sychar. And... Uh, uh, it's the plot of ground that uh, Jacob gave Joseph. You know, Joseph who was sold into slavery. And Jacob's well was there. And so, uh, and Jesus, therefore, being wearied in his journey, you know, he's, he's tired. And remember, God has become a, a human being, and he set aside his divine attributes. That means he gets hungry, he gets thirsty, he gets tired. He's identifying with the fallen human race. And, and so he sat by the well, and it was noon. That's what the sixth hour means. They started number the hour from dawn that way. That's the way it, it worked, okay? And a woman of Samaria came to draw water, and he, said, and he said to her, give me a drink. Now, he's broken all kinds of taboos right here, cultural, social taboos. Uh, he spoke to a woman who was unaccompanied by, uh, it was just him and her. He... he if he could have spoken to her if there was someone with him or if there was someone with her because he's a man, she's a woman, okay? A woman of Samaria came to draw me and he said, give me a drink. Give me a drink. <sighs> give me a drink. It's time for water break. Now, I'm, I, I, want to, I, want to under, I want you to understand that the hope that God has deposited in you as born-again people contains with it the mystery of God and its purpose for other people that you might not even know right now. Did you get that? Did you understand what I just said? God has deposited in you mysterious works that carry the message of hope and you must be available to speak to get things happening to interact to bring them out to set them at ease and show them value so you can communicate the truth that's in you because you really are born again. You have the message deposited in you of the way of life. 
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and we cannot access the Father except through him. And so people, you know, I grew up in, in the hills, we called them hills, of West Central, West Virginia. See, if it's not over a 1,000 feet high, it's not legally a mountain. It's got to be a 1,000 feet or a, more above sea level to be called legally a mountain, okay? If it's less than that, it's a hill. We had a few mountains, but most of them were hills because I knew that they were under a 1,000 feet where I, where I grew up. And so I knew... I know what it is to work in a hayfield and make hay. I mean, I know what it is to stack hay. Remember when they made haystacks? And you're talking about hard work. Oh, Lord have mercy. I remember eight years old, the pitchfork was taller than me. And you get in that fork full, and you had to pivot it and throw it up on top, whoever was doing the stacking. And you had to watch because you didn't want to fork him. <laughs> and get it up there. And, and he would put his foot down and, you, and then he would spread it around the pole. And so it would mat down and, and it would intertwine so it would stay up. And there was an art to it to where, you would, you would, to where it would shed water when it rained. Okay? And so... I was never so happy when somebody invented the bailer. I was a happy boy. Gray King, Gray King was the first fella in our community that had a bailer. Baby. You know, and here you are. Uh, hot dog, man. I'm, I'm 11 years old now. And you're picking up the bale, and it weighs more than half of you. And you're slinging it up on the, on the back of the truck. It, we were always so happy when whoever we were working for, you know, whether it was Harley Smith or, or Jimmy Harold or, or uh, uh, Gray King or Lester Drake. I mean, these are farmers in my, you know. And they said, okay, boys, it's time for a break. Give me a drink. Oh, mm, so refreshing because you're sweating profusely, you know. I mean, whoo. And uh, I want you to understand that the people all around us are sweating profusely in a spiritual way because they're looking and they're trying to find a drink. Now, they might go to the wrong place. They might go and say, give me a drink. Give me a drink. Give me, you got me a drink? You know? Oh, look, look what I found on the Internet. Give me a drink. And they'll drink from the devil's well. But we have the well of God because he said out of your belly will spring rivers, or will be living water spring out of you. You see, the mystery of the fact that God lives in us. Do you understand? The world is saying, give me a drink. And if you're not offering them a drink, well, they're going to find the drink somewhere. You know, the Mormon or the Jehovah Witness will come along. Or the, the strip bar will have an allure, you know, or, 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 or whatever, drugs or alcohol or what, whatever. Give me a drink. And so the hope that's in you, the hope of glory, we want to share it with people who need a drink. That Samaritan woman ne needed a drink, let me tell you. And, and the next point I want you to understand about this hope is it's not about the bucket. Now, 
in, in verse 8, the Bible says, For his disciples going away to the city by food. And the woman of Samaria said, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, and a Samaritan woman? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And that was true. And the woman said to him, or Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that says he could give me a drink, you'd ask him, and he'd give you living water. And the woman said, Sir, I, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than the, uh, our father Jacob? Now, see, she's claiming Jacob. You know, her Jewish side claim, her, her, is claiming Jacob. You see, who, uh, who gave us, us, the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock. And Jesus answered said to her, whoever drinks this water will thirst again. You know? You can drink from the pornography well, and you'll get thirsty again. You can drink from the from the drunkard's well, and and you'll get thirsty again. You 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 can smoke every cigarette in the county, and you're still one another. Do you understand? I don't care. And 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 the, I mean, the devil's aim is to addict you to something to keep you from the one source of water. You see. The woman said, sir, give me this water that I may thirst, that I may not thirst. Come here. And he said, uh, uh, and uh, Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. And the woman said, I have no husband. You said, right, you know, and, and he dealt with these things. But here's what the woman said. The Jews say you got to worship in Jerusalem, and our fathers say you worship here in the mountain of Samaria, Sychar, where Jacob's well is. We, we, we worship here. And, he, and Jesus said, you know, it doesn't matter. Hour's coming, it doesn't matter. We're in that hour. It's not about the bucket. It's not a Baptist bucket, a Pentecostal bucket. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a Methodist bucket, a Presbyterian bucket, a Catholic bucket, an Orthodox bucket. It's just a Jesus bucket. Do you hear me? It's a Jesus bucket. That's all, that's the bucket. You see, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not about your bucket, it's about his bucket. Do you hear me? It's the bucket that offers eternal life. And then, oh, I'm doing so good, I'm so proud of me. Uh, it's about the right well. Can we jump to that? Verse 21. Uh, he said, Jesus said, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither, in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Now, do you understand Jerusalem's on a mountain? You understand? And, and, and it's not that mountain. It's not this mountain. Uh, nor uh, worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. Now, you, can I tell you everybody worships? Can I tell uh, Do you understand that? Every human being on earth worships. Something, that's right. We're, that's how we're created. You know, some people worship football or fishing or golf or whatever, you know, whatever. You know, they worship. I mean, they make that the object. There, That's what their lives revolve around. But he says, you worship what you don't know, and my, that's, that's the case for most people, but that hope that's been deposited in you can change all that. He says, uh, verse 23 says, but the hour is coming, and now is. Now, Jesus says that hour is now. That uh, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. And then he says, God's a spirit. <laughs> Say Holy Spirit. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit. Now you see the little s? That's your spirit. And truth. And when you're born again, the Holy Spirit lives within you. And he enables you to offer up worship when you're focused on him. You're not distracted by, I want, I think, I feel. I'm not distracted by, well, my opinion I'm not distracted. I'm, just, I'm, I'm focused on him. 
And, and then the woman says, well, I know Messiah's coming. Messiah, that's the Hebrew version of, of our English word Christ. When he comes, he'll tell us all things. And look what he says. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. I know liberal theologians say, oh, Jesus never claimed to be God. Well, he just did. He just did. And at that point, the disciples came, and they marveled and said, well, hey, he's talking to that gal. That didn't mean, man, she's Samaritan, and, and, uh, and she's by herself, and, and there's something not right here. And, oh, my goodness, could you just hear the tongues get ready to, to wag? And the woman left the water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, a man told me all things I ever did. Could this be the Christ? I say, yes, it is. He's the right well. You hear me? He's the right well. My hope is in him, and he wants to mysteriously open doors and use us in ways that are beyond our wildest dreams. Beyond our wildest dreams. I never dreamed I'd ever go to Cuba one time in my lifetime. And now... Uh, you know, I, I mean, I get, I get pleas every week. Oh, come back, come back. I said, well, we're coming in November. Okay, we're coming in November. Be patient. <laughs> Persevere. You know? And, 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 and God might bring into your life. You know, when I go down to preach meetings down in the, near Mount Sterling, Kentucky, and they put, usually put me up in this hotel, and the hotel is owned by an Indian I mean a real Indian. You understand what I mean? I mean an Indian Indian. From India. You know? And if you ever notice, a lot of times their last name's Patel. P-A-T-E-L. You know what Patel means in Hindi? Hotel. They were named after what they did, just like every other people group. You know? The innkeeper. And he always, every time I'm there, he always asks me questions. And I'm thinking, oh, I never dreamed I'd be ministering to an Indian in Kentucky. <laughs> you know, sowing seeds, sowing seeds. The last time I was there, he said, now, if they put you up here, you let me know. Even if they don't, I want to come and hear you preach. I said, okay, that'll work. That'll work. You have the mystery of Christ in you. You are the right well. You have the right message. If you'll choose to just come under his authority, say, Lord, fill me and use me. Teach me your word. I want to obey you. I, I want to honor you. Help my life reflect you. Use me to take the mystery. I'm the right well because people have no hope, and I have hope to offer because you're our hope. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless us now and prepare our hearts as we uh, go into the uh, 1030 hour. And may, Lord, uh, people just, uh, may it just be a wonderful time of rejoicing. Rejoicing. Oh, Lord, and if, may lost people get saved and sick people get healed. And, and, and your people get filled with the Spirit. And, and, Lord, just do what you will for your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Yeehaw!